16 months of the war in Ukraine and innocent civilians continue to get caught in the crossfire. The latest setback comes to the people of Kherson who have had to pack their bags and evacuate their homes in a matter of minutes after the destruction of the Nova Kakova dam in that particular area. Kyiv has predicted that at least 42,000 people are at risk from the flooding of that dam. Water levels continued to rise after the Russian-occupied dam and hydroelectric power plant was destroyed yesterday morning. It is not clear yet whether the dam was deliberately attacked or whether the breach was a result of a structural failure. But blame game between the both sides continue. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called the destruction of this dam an act of mass environmental destruction by Russia. Going on to say that Russia should not be under the impression that Ukraine will stop its military plans. Meanwhile, at the United Nations, Russia blamed Ukraine for accusing Moscow of this kind of destruction without any evidence. О другій годині 50 хвилин ночі стався цей вибух. Абсолютно свідомий, підготовлений вибух. Вони точно знали, що вони роблять. Ну і від собі обсяг водосховища, а яке тримала ця дамба, одне з найбільших водосховищ України. І з ночі триває затоплення районів півдня нашої країни. Що найменше 100 тисяч людей жили в цих районах до російського вторгнення. Принаймні десятки, десятки тисяч досі там. 80 міст і сіл під водою. І вже почалася евакуація. І це лише первинні наслідки. І, на жаль, вже більше року Росія контролює і цю дамбу, і, і всю Каховську гідроелектростанцію. І підірвати, підірвати її якось Зовні обстрілами фізично, і це нереально. Вона була замінована, замінована саме російськими окупантами і підірвана ними. І це ще раз демонструє, з яким цинізмом Росія ставиться до людей, чию землю захопила. Та що насправді Росія несе Європі і світу? Це найбільша рукотворна екологічна катастрофа в Європі за а, десятки років. І це найбільш небезпечний терорист у світі. Now, the UN Security Council met yesterday at the request of both Russia and Ukraine after we saw the torrent of water burst through the massive dam on the Dnipro River. The world is watching closely to the developments that are taking place and the lives that have been put at risk by this destruction. Now, while the United States says it was not certain who was to be blamed, many world powers have come out in support of Ukraine, much like they've done in the last one year of the war. The United Nations has no access to independent information on the circumstances that led to the destruction of the Kakova, in the Kakova hydroelectric power plant dam. But one thing is clear. This is another devastating consequence of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We will continue our humanitarian work and our appeals for urgent, safe and secure humanitarian access. Today's tragedy is yet another example of the horrific price of war on people. The floodgates of suffering have been overflowing for more than a year, and that must stop. Attacks against civilians and critical civilian infrastructure must stop. And we must act to ensure accountability and respect for international humanitarian law. Above all, I appeal for a just peace in line with the UN Charter international law and the resolutions of the General Assembly. And I thank you. We hope to have more information in the coming days, but I mean, come on, let's, let's be obvious. I mean, why would Ukraine do this to its own territory and people? Flood its land, uh, force tens of thousands to leave their homes. It just doesn't make sense. We've been prioritizing air defense now for many, many months. And in this last package, one I think we just talked about last week, there were additional interceptor missiles. So without getting ahead of uh, announcements to come, I can assure you that 
air defense remains top on the list of the kinds of capabilities that we're going to continue to make sure Ukraine has. Again, I don't want to get ahead of where we are. We know air defense is a priority, and we know how well the Patriots have been performing inside Ukraine, which is, again, why we provided some additional interceptor missiles last week. All I can tell you is that we're going to prioritize it going forward. I just don't want to get ahead of announcements. Okay. I also want to speak to uh, the destruction of the dam in southern Ukraine, uh, which uh, is absolutely devastating for uh, lives and livelihoods uh, across the region. This is yet another example of uh, the horrific consequences of Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine. Sanjay, my colleague, joining us from London to get us more details of where exactly the war stands at the moment. And Sanjay, as far as Kursor is concerned, uh, there is a massive evacuation. Kiev puts the number at about 42,000 people that still could be at risk. You know, uh, there is a question here about how damaging this is going to be for Ukraine. And we just heard that it wouldn't make sense to Ukraine to do that to its own people. But do bear in mind the terrain there. And I visited uh, uh, Kherson not very long back. The area has been deserted. It is destroyed. It's devastated. Ukraine has almost nothing to lose on its side of uh, Kherson. There is continuous shelling, continuous firing. Shelling was continuing all around us when we were there. Uh, we could hear the shelling all around us, houses destroyed all around us. So this uh, flow of water is not going to damage a living city. That city on the Ukraine side is dead. It could potentially do a lot more damage on the Russian side. It's on the eastern side of the river that the Russians have dug in. In defense, uh, they have a civilian population to control and to also defend, much of it, of course, also Ukrainian. And it's also their pathway to Crimea. Consider one other factor, that it is this uh, dam burst that's going to potentially endanger a supply of water to Crimea from a channel that feeds it. And one of the first things the Russians did when they invaded last year was to control that access and to have that flow resume. This really is going to lead a potential a threat to Crimea. It is not great for the Russians. So are we saying therefore that the Ukrainians did it? We are not saying that because we don't know. But clearly uh, there is a, a lot of consequence here that could be very damaging to the Russians. Which is also why we saw the kind of stand that the United States took at the UN, isn't it? They too said that we are not certain as to what exactly happened and who's to blame. But as far as uh, this particular dam is concerned and the region is concerned, now now, Ukraine coming out and saying that this is not going to stop our military offensive uh, as well. So then do you think that this could be a part of the entire narrative or part of the entire plan or the counter-offensive that uh, perhaps Ukraine has been planning because they've been keeping that under the wraps as well? Well, that would appear strategically suitable uh, to Ukraine. This is going to be... Uh potentially strategically advantageous to Ukraine. And we do know that the U.S. has taken a position that we don't know. The British Foreign Secretary said, well, ultimately, it's the Russian invasion responsible for this situation. Uh, quite correct, of course, uh, to say that. But both the U.K. and the U.S. have stopped short of naming anybody. They have stopped short of saying very definitely that it was the Russians. And surely they would have enough intelligence information satellite imagery and other sources on which to base a view, they would have a fair idea what happened and they are not saying anything. But clearly this is a move that could be an element in the uh, Ukrainian counter-offensive, if at all it is the Ukrainians uh, uh, who, are, who are responsible for this. And bearing in mind also that there has been a breach in that dam for some days running before this. Uh, you would think if the Russians wanted to expand that breach, nothing stopped them from doing it earlier. This is going to depend a great deal on which way the water flows. And the Dnipro, uh, clearly between the western and the eastern side, is a major defense for the Russian positions. They retreated to the other side despite the bad optics of that because they wanted protection and they wanted protection for Crimea. And this is a breach in all sorts of ways.